Hi, I think you'll agree with me that the world's standards are low. Men will especially understand when choosing a lady for a wife. But women too can understand that not every man is for them. So let's look into this, shall we? Before we begin, let's pray, shall we? Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the blessing of your son and that he is our divine standard. Help our minds to comprehend this truth. In Jesus' name we ask, Amen. Thank you for joining me in prayer. In choosing a wife or a husband, divine standards should be upheld. So let's look at how this fast began, okay? We know that God took a rib out of Adam and then made Eve and then he brought her to him. Now listen to what Adam says. This is now born of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Notice the expression, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. Now, here's something interesting. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul is explaining a mystery, a mystery that exists between Christ and the church and a man and his wife. We read in Ephesians, for we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. That rings a bell, bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh. And when you go further down in verse 32, Paul says, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So there you see a connection. Adam and Eve, bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh. The church and Christ, bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh, right? Now, this is the divine standard for us ladies. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. This is the divine standard. If you're a young lady and you're thinking about marriage, ask yourself, what has been his past record? Is his life pure? Is the love which he expresses of a noble and elevated character or is it mere emotional fondness? Can I find true joy and peace in his love? Can I preserve my individuality? Will he be patient with my mistakes? Or is he going to be critical, overbearing and dictatorial? Will he give his life for you? Will he esteem you better than himself? Will his influence sanctify you or will it degrade you? These questions have a lot of bearing upon the woman who's thinking to be married. It matters a lot if you will be happy in a marriage. And here's the clue. If he asks you for intimacy that is due only in marriage, before you guys are married, run! This is the sign that this is not a godly man. A godly man will not disgrace God by asking you for intimacy that is due only in marriage. He will respect you enough not to even ask of it. And in the marriage, he will exercise self-control. So ladies, do not sacrifice your dignity just because you think that there, there are no more godly men in the world. There are godly men, there is a godly man for you. And as you're preserving yourself for him, then he will also preserve himself for you. So that at the right time, and with the unction of God and of heaven, you two will be brought together in marriage and you will honor God in doing so. Remember, dear ladies, you are not an object. You are not to be used to gratify the passions of a man. You have been bought with a prize and the prize is the life of the Son of God. So do not sacrifice your value. Do not sacrifice your dignity 
just because you think you cannot find any good or godly men out there. Remember the divine standard? Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. That's it for today, friends. Thank you for joining and for listening in. And as for the ladies, you are valued. Okay, bye. See you next time. Until next time, take care and God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>